Welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron, live interactive Bible study. We're leader led by Pastor Douglas Banks out of Columbia, Maryland, and our facilitator is Minister Brenda Robb from Northern California. We're currently studying the book of Revelation. Come on in, have a seat, and study with us. Out of Columbia, Maryland, he's our teacher. My name is Minister Brenda. I am your facilitator. And we have numerous leaders that are on the line that help us daily. Again, it's interactive. We get to study, learn, and grow together. I will be leading us into prayer this morning. Good morning, Heavenly Father. I come to your throne of grace and mercy with a humble heart and a contrite spirit. In the matchless name of Jesus, first of all, giving you thanks for the abundant blessings of a new day. For this is truly the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what comes that way. Even the hard times of life, Father God, we will make our boast and our brag in you. Because, Father, in your word, you said that you want the best for us. Oh, God, I come this morning praying for myself and everyone that is on the line. It is no accident, Father, that we're here, but it's a divine appointment. Father, let that, that they are like Mary who made a choice to sit at the master's feet. So, Father God, I ask you to bless them and meet them at their needs. Let them know the most innermost the innermost secrets of your heart, Father God, so they can apply it to their heart, the wisdom and knowledge that they need, Father God, to, to navigate in this earthly journey. Oh, Father, teach him, teach him, Lord God. Your word says to study, to show yourself approved. Oh, unto God, the workmen not to be ashamed, but they can rightly devise the word of truth, Father God. Father, we need clarity, we need understanding, we need direction, and we need guidance. Once we hear the word, Father God, let us not be just here, but doers of your word, Father God. Let us do what you have told us to do. And we're so thankful, Father God, that you've given us the opportunity. Now, Father, I'm asking you to touch Mark Squeeze Bryant's family, Father God. Oh, God, one of your soldiers has come home, Father God. Oh, God, they don't know the situation, what it's all about. But, Father, you know, Father God. So we ask you, Father, let them find out what's going on in the situation so they can be at peace. Oh, God, anyone else on this line is going through any hard places, Father God, touch them as well, Father God. Oh, let them keep holding fast to your word, knowing that your word will secure them, will comfort them, Peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of the storm, Father God, that your word is a lamp to their feet and a light to their path that will direct them in every way, Father. And I just ask you for all these things that touch the man of God, Lord God, who is thoroughly equipped to lead us in this Bible study line. Continue to let him draw strength from you and not get weary in well-doing, Father God, but continue to let your spirit overshadow him. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 And welcome each and every one uh, to the line. And our condolences certainly go out to the family. Bless God. Um, We're glad that everyone has come. We thank God for the minister leading us into the throne of grace. We're covered by the covenant of grace and God's mercy, and we are able to receive the benefits of prayer. And so we gather together, even through this telephonic communication, in the words of prayer and thank God for it. Also, we need to thank God that uh, our democracy is still standing. The attack, the assault on our uh, capital uh, did not prevail. Uh, Nancy Pelosi was not killed. Uh, uh, Pence was not hanged. Uh, the the lines of uh, continuation of the government uh, are still in place. Uh, so we have prevailed this, that demonic assault on the democracy of America. So we want to thank God for that, and we want to ask God to continue moving us upward um, and not to let violence overtake this country. Uh, let there not be a civ- second civil war. And if for some reason the Lord allows it, I pray it ends the same way the first one ended, not with those who have the spirit of enslaving others, but those who have the spirit of uniting this country from all parts of the world. We need to go back then to um, 
page 77 of our workbook, uh, we had uh, ended on the six key personalities of the Great Tribulation. And I think we had got up to a couple, but I just want to quickly review uh, the six key personalities of the Great Tribulation period. We started with the sun-clothed woman, the dragon, and the male child. It's important to get all these personalities straight in our heads so we'll we'll know what's going on, Uh, starting with the sun-clothed woman who bore the male child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. That means there is discipline. That means there are Ten Commandments. There there are the judgments of God that need to be in place. And so uh, her child would rule. Now, uh, the Bible most clearly states that this is Israel, that Israel was given the task of producing the child that would come uh, to rule all nations. Uh, some people think, some, some people postulate that the sun-clothed woman is Mary, out of whom is born the Christ. However, when you go through the Bible, it more closely appears to me and to most uh, people that uh, the word of God is speaking of Israel. Okay, so on page 77, the sun in the middle there, the sun will later reign during his millennial kingdom. The phrase rod of iron means he will swiftly and firmly judge all sin. Pastor? And... uh, Yes. This is Gloria. I'm sorry, but for those that are new on the line um, and have just come on, could we let them know that we're in Revelations 12? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. (laughs) If you have not been following us, yes, we are in Revelation chapter 12. I'm uh, sorry about that. Yes, we are in Revelation chapter 12. And we, in our workbook, uh, if you don't have it, our workbook is Lesson 18. We're talking about the six key personalities of the Great Tribulation. We're talking about the tribulation period, uh, the period that uh, there has been no period like it in the past, and there will be no period like it in the future, when literally all hell is going to break loose on the earth. We went through some of the things that would happen. We're at the seven trumpets. Uh, which is the final uh, final judgment of God. That's where we're standing right now, at the final judgment of God. And parenthetically, we're introducing some of the personalities that are there uh, during this final judgment of God. And on page 77 of our workbook, we talk about the first three, the sun-clothed woman, the dragon, and the male child. Um, and so the sun-clothed woman, we went back over and saw that there was a first mention of her uh, in the Bible, in Genesis, Genesis uh, 37, 9 and 10. Uh, Joseph's dream uh, declared who this woman is. And if we go to the middle of our, um, our page here, one, two, three, four, the fourth paragraph talks about the crown of 12 stars, which is mentioned in Joseph's dream. Uh, the crown of 12 stars probably represent the 12 tribes. <clears throat> and we have gone over that previously. So next, John sees another wonder, uh, a great red dragon. And uh, the red dragon clearly uh, represents Satan. It's in chapter 12, 3, A and B. And I'll read that. It says, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And we talked about that, how the the stars represent uh, the angels in heaven. And we went over that in Jude and in Second Peter that these are one-third of the angels of heaven that Satan drew with him uh, when he rebelled against God. They decided to follow Satan rather than God. Okay, so this is the beast. 
Uh, we're going to get into that, who is the Antichrist, the beast of the Antichrist. It's, uh, this is the Antichrist is the human being who is totally consumed by Satan. He is full of Satan. He uh, walks with Satan. He talks with Satan. He, he is uh, Satan's representative on earth. We talked about the, uh, the unholy trinity. The unholy trinity is Satan himself. He tries to represent himself like the father. Uh, this antichrist, this first beast, uh, tries to represent himself like Jesus Christ. And the uh, third uh, part of the trinity will be the second beast. And he will try to, he's the false prophet, and he will try to represent himself like the Holy Spirit. So, so this, uh, <clears throat> this beast that comes, this antichrist that comes, has seven heads and ten horns, which represent power and represent Satan's control over the world during the Great Tribulation. So Satan is given the opportunity to control the world uh, by God, and he's given his help, which is the Antichrist and the beast. And he has seven heads and ten horns. So what in the world is that? Let's... let's uh, Let's take a look at first mention in reference to that. Uh, we could find that in Daniel 7. Daniel 7. Let's, let's find out about these uh, ten horns. So if somebody would read Daniel 7, uh, verses 21 through 27, please. Daniel 7, verses 21 through 27. Minister Brenda, I read, and I have a uh, New King James Version this morning. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing and against them until the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after him, and he shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. Verse 25, he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and time and half a time. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. 27, then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints, of the Most High, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Amen, the word of God. Amen. So Daniel uh, prophesied, he sees this time of great tribulation uh, thousands of years before it actually occurred, but he, he lays it out pretty much what's going to happen. And now when you get into all the details, as I said, we may do later on after we finish Revelation. Geographically, it's pointed out uh, in the Bible that this area uh, that this uh, Antichrist will come out of is Europe. The ten nations that will back him are European nations, um, they, they, and maybe including uh, the United States and Canada also. It's possible that it will also include uh, the United States and Canada. But these ten nations will uh, come together. It will be a United States of Europe, like the United States of America. They will have one, um, one 
uh, uh, one money, one one type of money, and one type of commerce, and and they will be united. Even though they will have heads of their nations, they will be united as a federation, like the United States. And so these kingdoms will uh, be given authority over the earth until the uh, enemy turns even against them. Uh, and, and you see in verse 24, when it says, another shall rise after them, he shall be different from the first one and shall subdue three kings. So he's going to turn on this, uh, this federation, this organization. He's going to take out three of them and just demand power for himself. It will be uh, at this time, as the 144 witnesses are going throughout the earth, converting Jews and others to Jesus Christ, he is going to have a fit, um, and he's going to begin to just say, no, Jesus is not God, I am God, and he will set himself up as the abomination of desolation in the temple of God in Israel, and beginning with the Jews, he will begin to persecute everybody uh, who does not agree that he is God. Um, so that's uh, where we're at. Any questions, comments about that? This is Gloria, and I do have a question on that. Does this mean that it looks like um, the church will already be gone when the nations come together as one? Absolutely. We're long gone. This is, this is the great tribulation. This time period is always given as a time, times, and half a time, which is three and a half years, or it's given as 42 months, which is three and a half years. This is the second part of the, the tribulation. It's called the Great Tribulation. During the Great Tribulation, the church will not be here. The church will already have been raptured, met Jesus, Second Thessalonians. We will have met Jesus in the middle of the air, and we will be with him uh, forever. And the, holy, the indwelling Holy Spirit that has been given to the church will leave with us. And so the people that are here will not have the indwelling Holy Spirit. That is given to the church of Jesus Christ. And so once the church of Jesus Christ is gone, all hell will break loose on earth. But this will not include uh, the church. At this time, people will have to basically die to confess Jesus Christ as Lord um, um, because the whole world will then be set against anybody who calls on the name of Jesus. Uh, it's at this time the geography will picture a united Europe. There will be a single currency. There will be a government head, uh, and they will call this the, the revival of the Roman Empire until uh, the Antichrist turns on them uh, beginning with Israel and three of the most prominent of the uh, the countries, and just takes over for himself. Mm. Um, okay. Good so, morning. This, yeah. Good morning. Mm -hmm. This is extreme. Uh, I'm going to ask mm -hmm. a question. So, the people that have the mark, and we speaking of the hundred forty-four thousand, they all on. They all on Earth at the same time while all of this tribulation is going on, right? Yes, these are parenthetical chapters. They're letting us know what's going on as the judgment of God is pouring out onto the Earth. Yes. So when those trumpets, the six, the, the fifth and the sixth trumpets, and those, uh. uh and I think it's number six where the, the they look like locusts when the judgments and they are released on the earth and they're picking at the people. The people that have a mark are not being harmed by them. It's just those that don't have a mark, right? Yes. So they're just sitting there looking at them and it ain't bothering them at all? They're probably dead. They're probably with Jesus Christ. If you have the mark, they're either dead or going to be dead soon. Because remember, the, the 144 are evangelists. They're going around spreading, spreading the truth of Jesus Christ as Lord. People will be receiving it, and people will be saved.
but they still can't buy food. They still can't eat. They still can't live. They still can't get a job. They still can't support their children. So they're in a rough situation. Uh, one half of the world's population uh, will be dead. And so it, all hell will be broken loose. And so these people will be either dead or dying um, during this time. But the 144,000 witnesses will still be witnessing. They will still be witnessing. They will be trying to bring people to Jesus even in the midst of this chaos. So, Pastor, one more question then. So when John first goes to, to heaven and he sees those children who've been, who have been washed in the blood of Jesus and they're got on their white robes, but they have a soul and they're still under the altar, is that the ones that you're just speaking of that are dead on earth, but their but their souls are being kept in heaven. Quite possibly. Okay. Yeah, quite possibly. <laughs> when we jump from a linear segue of time and space into earth into heaven, remember we're talking about eternity once we're into heaven. And things that we see as future have already been decreed by God. God's word has gone forth. It's already done. And so when we jump to the martyrs under the, under the throne of God, uh, they are most likely martyrs of the great tribulation. Yes. Wow. Okay. That, that clears it for me. Thank you. I have a comment, I believe. This mm-hmm. is the poor. You say that 144,000, they still spread in the word. And um, while the tribulation, the great tribulation is going on. Um, I'm just saying, I'm just thinking of them spreading the word, and but the, um, their, uh, the, 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 the spirit, their spirit, they, the spirit is not in them at this time right now because it's, it's, it's gone, right? It's up back to, it's back with Jesus, Right. So I mean, it's 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 a little hard for them to even, um, 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 I would say, hard for them to spread a good word when they don't have the spirit, the Holy Spirit with them. It's a little harder for them to understand, especially with all this stuff is going on. Do you think you understand what I'm saying? Yes, but you have to remember that even though the indwelling Holy Spirit is not with them, that does not mean the Holy Spirit is not with them. They are still protected and provided for. Uh, they have received, have not received the mark of the beast. Now, remember, the Holy Spirit can also come on you. The Holy Spirit came on Samson. The Holy Spirit came on Moses and Joshua. They did not have the indwelling Holy Spirit either. But what they did have is the Holy Spirit coming on them to empower them like Joshua and, um, and some of the other great saints of the Old Testament under the first covenant. So because they don't have the indwelling Holy Spirit doesn't mean they don't have the Holy Spirit working for them and helping them and strengthening them. Oh, thank you. I thought that I thought the indwell I thought the indwelling Holy Spirit I mean I thought the the spirit was just gone from them pit completely. But I No, the think. church has a special gift. The indwelling Holy Spirit is a very special gift. It allows us to be forgiven. He allows us to be guided. He allows us to be comforted. He allows us to make mistakes and get up off the floor seven times a day if we have to. He is uh, our guardian that leads us to Jesus Christ in spite of our weakness. He gives us strength and comfort such like no one has seen before. The church has this wonderful gift uh, that was given at Pentecost of the indwelling Holy Spirit that allows us, because we're followers of Jesus Christ, allows us to be uh, uh, shielded and, and held and protected and provided for, no matter what our situation or what our situa- uh, circumstance, on the sick bed, on a death bed, in poverty, uh, in pain, there is a Holy Spirit that will lift us and cause us to know that God is with us. 
Now, that is not the same thing as the Holy Spirit coming on people that are serving God where they are, and that is still possible. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we're at the bottom of page um, 77, um, and it talks about the stars are often used in the Bible to refer to angels, so we want to be clear about that. Many believe when Satan was cast out of heaven that one-third of the angels were cast out with him, and we find that in Jude 6, 2 Peter 2 and 4. So one-third of the angels uh, joined up with Satan against God. The dragon stands before the woman who was about to give birth so he can devour this child. Uh, so we know that uh, Satan tried to kill Jesus, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so we're at, basically, we're at chapter 13. And if someone would uh, read for us chapter 13, uh, verses 1 through 9, and then another reader I would ask to pick up at 10 through 18. So two readers, uh, one to take us through 1 through 9, and someone else to pick up from 10 through 18, please. Excuse me, Pastor, before uh, they read, please, if you're not reading, put your phone on speakerphone. I mean, put your phone on mute. We're hearing the speakerphone echoes right now. Please put your phone on mute if you're not reading. Thank you. Good morning. This is Cynthia. I can read Revelations 13, 1 through 9 of the New King James. It says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Five, and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All we who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. Amen. The word of God. Hello. Um, he didn't come off mute. Uh, hi, hi. Um, yeah, before the reader goes on, thank you. Before the reader goes on to 10 through 18, um, I want to draw your attention to what we're seeing here. We're talking about this beast coming up out of, uh, out of the sea, having the seven heads and the ten horns. The ten horns we know are the nations, and the crowns on his head signify that they are rulers. They are rulers, but they're ruling in a blasphemous way against God. And this beast... Uh, uh, comes up, and uh, the dragon, who is Satan, gives him his power. He gives him his power on earth, gives him his throne on earth, and gives him great authority. He's trying to emulate Jesus. This is part of the uh, unholy trinity. Satan is trying to make himself like uh, the Father, and he gives this Antichrist uh, authority like Jesus. So you got Satan, you got the Antichrist. And in and, and verse 3, you see one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world marveled and followed the beast. This is the beast copying God again, um, trying to make his Antichrist look like he was resurrected. 
but he's resurrected mm-hmm. on earth. He de- he's going to uh, get some kind of wound. He's gonna, somebody's going to revolt, try to assassinate him, uh, and actually maybe really do assassinate him, but he's going to be brought back to life, and people are going to be amazed and, uh, at his resurrection on earth, and they're going to follow him because, I mean, who's like this, this, this guy? I mean, he was killed, and now he's back. So Satan, once again, is trying to uh, emulate God. Uh, So people will fall in line behind him. And then verse 5 says he's given a mouth. He'll speak blasphemy. He'll talk against God, uh, and he'll lift himself up as God for 42 months. Again, that's three and a half years, three and a half years. This is the time of the great tribulation. And then verse 6, he's going to continue to blaspheme against God. Uh, He's going to blaspheme, set up his tabernacle, and he's going to blaspheme those who dwell in heaven. That's us. He's going to blaspheme us, we who dwell in heaven. This is the church and all the saints of God. He's going to come against us, period. Now, those who are on earth still being uh, saved and do not have the indwelling Holy Spirit will still hear witness and still bear testimony that all this is happening on the earth. Now, he's going to look like a winner because he's going to be... uh, invading our, our, uh, our uh, citadels, invading our, um, our cabinet areas, invading our homes and, and winning. And everybody's going to say, wow, look at this guy. He's a winner. And all those who dwell on earth uh, who don't want to believe the word of God will begin to worship him. All those, uh, verse 8, who says, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So all of those who choose will follow him. Um, He will attack our capitals. He will attack our White House. He will attack our uh, uh, Pentagon, and he will be winning at this time. Um, And then verse 9 lets us know if anyone has an ear, let him hear. Okay. Okay. So someone would read for us uh, verses 10 through 18, please. This is Opal. Good morning. I'll read, and I have my little grandson here. If you hear any noises in the background. So reading from (laughs) verse 10, if anyone is destined for captivity to captivity, he goes. If anyone kills with the sword, with the sword he must be killed. Here is the perseverance and the faith of the saints. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and he takes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth, I'm sorry, to the earth in the presence of man. And he deceives those who dwell on earth because of the signs which, is, which it was given to him to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he causes all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. This is the word of God. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's dig into 10 through 18 a little bit. Uh, we know in 10, he who leads Pastor, the captivity shall I'm go. I'm sorry. Yes. Pastor, no, I'm sorry. This is Minister Brenda. I don't believe mm-hmm. that we covered Michael the archangel. Uh, 
No, we have, <laughs> and we'll get to that. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to, I just, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, verse 10 says, uh, he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. In other words, those who are following this evil, this, this devil and his antichrist, and you're, you're taking people into captivity, uh, you will wind up going into captivity. And all of his army that comes and kills people, they shall also be killed. Uh, the ones who are going through this turbulence on earth need patience, and they need the faith of the saints. Now, verse 11 says he sees another beast coming up out of the earth. Now, this is the false prophet. Now, remember, the, three, the unholy trinity is Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. So when we talk about the first beast, we're talking about the Antichrist. When we're talking about the second beast, we're talking about the false prophet. The false prophet, as we go along, you will learn, will be a religious leader. He will be in charge of a, 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 a great religious institution, a worldwide religion. And he will be bringing people uh, under the dominion of Satan as God and a religion that worships Satan as God. So the uh, uh, false prophet is now on the earth speaking like a dragon, speaking the words of the dragon, okay? And he has power when he's in the presence of the Antichrist to do uh, what looks like miracles. He can perform illusion miracles. Um, he performs signs. So people are impressed. And the Bible says uh, if it were possible, these things that they're doing would even fool the people of God. It would fool us if it were possible. Uh, because we have the indwelling Holy Spirit, it's not possible. Uh, it would not be possible even if we were here. But it would fool us if we did not have God. So he performs these signs. He's deceiving everybody with these signs. Uh, and he's really bringing people by the millions to follow Satan. He's granted power. Uh, to even give breath to the image, to an idol, causing people to worship the idol. Uh, and they're worshiping this idol that he causes to be able to speak. And now we get to the point where you can't buy food, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're free or slave, you can't do anything in this uh, global market. You can't do anything unless you receive the mark on your right hand or on your forehead. You can't buy and sell. You can't have a job. You can't do anything unless you receive this mark uh, of the beast or the, uh, no, his name or the number of his name. And this number, as we all know, is 666. And there are all kinds of speculations as to what exactly 666 means. I will tell you my speculation. My speculation is uh, that 666 represents the incompleteness of mankind. Seven is the number of perfection and completion and wholeness, whereas six is the number of mankind. Mankind is incomplete without God. And so uh, that's the number of man, six, uh, and I believe that 666 represents mankind under the authority of the unholy trinity. Mankind under the authority of uh, Satan and his minions. That's my interpretation. Okay, any questions or comments uh, from anyone about what you see uh, in this situation? This is Deborah. Oh, oh, oh. This is the first time. Yeah. This is the first time uh -huh. I've heard that uh, um, incompletion um, of mankind six 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 because it sounds sounds good because seven is completion six have to be incomplete so I, I, that's the first time I heard it like that. But uh, Amen. Well, that's my so. thesis. And I'm standing by it. 
Okay. And because it's 666 for me, it just means uh, it's under the authority of the unholy trinity rather than under the authority of the real trinity, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay. So then uh, okay. that takes us back. Yes. One quick question. So this and the Christ, he looks just like a like you and I. It's just that he's ordained by by Satan himself. Exactly. Um John here is here describing in the spirit the horns. The horns represent uh power, like on an animal, the animals that have the biggest, baddest horns, like a ram or or uh any any horned animal or a dragon. The horns represent power and authority. This is symbolic. He's not going to walk around with, horn, you know, with horns showing out of his head. Uh, he's going to look like you and me. You're absolutely right. In fact, he'll probably be a lot better looking than me, and he's going to, he's going to be, like, handsome. And uh, he can make himself like an angel of light. Uh, so he'll, be, he'll, with, he'll draw people to him uh, in his looks and in his words and in his ability on a human level. Uh, he'll be solving problems of humanity and bringing people to him. And then when he reveals himself, he'll be drawing people to him with pure power, with pure power and, and uh, devastation, and people won't have a chance to do anything but obey him or die. Uh, so, yeah, the, the symbolic thing about him having horns and all of that is how he's seen in the spirit. He's seen in the spirit as, as having these horns, uh, which represent power, and these crowns, which represent authority. But he's going to look like a regular human being to us, no doubt. So if we okay. can. Okay. My name is Nicole. I have a question. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay. My question is, so the ten horns represent power. What do the seven heads? Is that, what is the seven heads? Mean? Yeah, the se- seven heads are, are part of who he is. He's able to see from these seven perspectives. Uh, so he has a complete um, knowledge of earth. He's able to see from these seven perspectives. Uh, and this, so that's spiritual. He's not really going to have a literal seven heads. But John yeah. is looking at him in the spirit. John is seeing mm-hmm. the crowns that are on his head, which represent his authority, those ten nations that will unite uh, to help cause this overthrow of government as we know it uh, into a mm-hmm. new government, a government uh, ruled by a tyrant, an unholy leader. Uh, so, and the seven heads represent his, his, his knowledge, like from all directions. He will have this completeness of human knowledge and how to best do us. Okay. Thank you. Hi, this is Opal. Um, Verse 10, Pastor Banks, it says, if anyone is destined for captivity, to captivity he goes. And if anyone kills with the sword, with the sword he must be killed. What What is that talking about? Okay, so he who leads into captivity... These are the, the, the people who are following the Antichrist. They will be leading okay. millions into captivity. They will be leading millions into captivity, those who won't follow, uh, obey orders, and even just to make the trains run on time. They will be taking freedom away from everybody. Everybody's not going to have freedom. They're going to be led into the captivity of following this satanic rule. And what the Bible says, is that those who will be leading people into captivity, they're going to go into captivity themselves, and they will. They are going to be banished to hell. Um, and, okay. and those who are soldiers who are going around killing people with the sword, and that's uh, a symbolic also. It could be the sword, gun, knife, uh, bomb, whatever. Those who are going around killing people are also going to be killed that way. Mm. It sounds it sounds like Afro Eye. Yes, it does. So, so okay. So this this is a rhetoric question. So, how do we get 
our children, our friends, our families to, to understand this. And I know we can talk to them until the cows come home. But how do you get people to understand that these things are going to happen or coming? Well, you have to pray and you have to tell them the truth regardless of whether they receive it or not. Those who are going to be with God will receive it. They'll receive it now. They'll receive it five years from now. Wherever, whatever it takes, they must hear it. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so, first of all, it is our job, our duty to witness to this truth. You are learning it. Now you have a greater responsibility because you are learning it. And so now you are more responsible, like that grandchild I hear in the background, to some way tell him you have to listen to God because if you don't follow God, there will be hell to pay. In other words, they have to hear it from somebody, and we have to bear witness to somebody. Uh, Now, those who are going to be with God will be drawn by the Holy Spirit. You cannot get to God unless you're drawn to God by the Holy Spirit. And so that's why we witness to everybody. We tell everybody, Jesus is Lord. You know, I, you, know you, you drug dealer over there, Jesus is Lord. Are you prostitute walking the street? Jesus is Lord. You businessman over here um, that's scamming the people, Jesus is Lord. We, it's our job just to tell people, um, well, we can't make anybody follow God. God doesn't make anybody follow him. And we certainly can't make anybody follow him. Our job is to witness to the truth, and then the Holy Spirit will draw those who belong to God. Okay. Okay, so uh, tomorrow we will pick up at uh, the top of page 78. Uh, The top of page 78 we'll pick up. Uh, And, Lord God, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to be blessed uh, seven times by reading your word, to be blessed by getting the knowledge of what is to come, blessed by knowing that we're covered and, and kept from the wrath of God because we've decided to follow Jesus, blessed by the word of truth that's in our mouth and in our hearts, in our minds and in our souls that we uh, may not understand everything and we don't even have to. All we have to know is that Jesus is the Lord and he's promised to protect, defend, and bring into glory those who follow him. And so we ask you, O God, to continue to strengthen us, to open our mouths and tell the truth to all we come in contact with and to be a living witness, an illustration of what it is to show kindness and to have peace and to show joy and compassion to our brothers and our sisters around us. We thank you, Lord, uh, for the wonderful gift of the indwelling Holy Spirit that comforts us and keeps us and calls us your own. We ask that you continue to make us bold for the word of God uh, as we live. As long as we're on this side of Jordan, Lord, help us to teach somebody, tell somebody, help somebody to come out of darkness into your marvelous light. Help us to do those things. Oh, God, you said, Jesus, greater things than you did would we do. Greater things uh, will be our healing of people who are sick and infirm and who need the healing power of God. Greater things, oh, God. And so our teaching will be greater. It will be multiplied all over the world through satellite, through Internet, through telephone, through walking and talking all over this world, not just in northeastern Africa. Greater things, uh, greater kindness we will show by the millions and the hundreds of millions as we give our gifts of money so that people can have food, so that people can buy shoes, so that people can get uh, surgery, so that people can know what it is to have a house or a desk. Oh, God, we will do greater things uh, in healing and in teaching and in comforting those Uh, who don't have a way to be comforted except Christianity reaches out to them, oh God. Help us to continue to bring others unto the teaching and the healing and the ministry of Jesus Christ the Lord. Uh, This we pray in your name, Lord, and for your sake. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You all have a blessed day.